Ready. Okay. Uh, can you cut in English? Yeah? Yeah, at first. Yeah, yeah please. Um, <laughs> maybe this is more political about the first version. So I want to know uh, the political aspect of this movie he, because it's uh, this year is the year in which some blockbuster became political. For example, Captain America, Winter Soldier, is the right. first superhero after that again. This one is one about deal about poverty. So you you wanna tell us what's happening in entertaining in the USA? Oh, well, I, I uh, well, I hope that uh, like John Carpenter's movies or the movies of the '70s come back. I mean, that would be great. I I don't think. I don't think it's fair to say that's really happening yet, but uh, but definitely the idea in the first movie and, and more in the second movie was to kind of put a subversive political message in a fun, scary, thrilling movie. That was definitely our intention. I missed that. Yeah, the movie. This movie was more expensive than the first movie, and it was harder to do. And uh, we had more days. We shot it in more days. So we had we shot this movie in twenty seven days. The first movie we shot actually in nineteen days. About the plot, I'll say um, it was difficult to take uh, the 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 first the first idea to the next level, you know, because you, now you you show the, all the social systems which is behind the, the first, so it, you have to, to expand the story uh, by a narrative point of view. So how did you manage to to take the first? Well, the story, the purge is supposed to be a uh, a cautionary tale. It's the idea is that um, America's relationship to guns. Every time there's a shooting in America, our answer seems to be we need more guns and more people with guns protecting each other. So, so the idea of the movie is that if we keep going in this direction, look what might happen. So I think personally, The Purge is a terrific idea for a movie, but a terrible idea for society. Eh, rispetto a eh, lei ha prodotto molti film diciamo di, eh, di questo genere un po' found footage pop come i vari paranormal attivity rispetto a quei film quando vi trovate invece a lavorare su questo genere di film diciamo improntati su, sulla maniera classica di raccontare è più difficile per voi o è più semplice? You mean is, is found footage harder than traditionally shot movies? Is that what you mean? No, intendevo tra le due categorie se per loro è più difficile lavorare sul film tradizionale come questo o sul film tipo found footage che devono passare per falsi documentari. Yeah, 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 there's a lot of difference. A good found footage movie is much harder to make than a good traditionally shot movie. So it seems like it would be easier and cheaper, but to make it believable, it's harder for one simple reason, which is when you're making a found footage movie, every time something dramatic happens, it's very difficult to justify why you would still be filming. When someone is shot or stabbed, or scared, the first thing you would do is drop the camera. So it's very, very hard to make a, the reason, it's very hard to make a found footage movie that when you're experiencing it, feels like it's really found footage, and it's why so many found footage movies are terrible. Preoccupati dall'assenza, in questo caso, di una star, di un grande nome immediatamente riconosciuto dal pubblico, come c'era nel film precedente. 
Um, no, we make we make all our movies low budget, and part, one of the advantages of that is that we don't get stuck behind the schedules and salaries of movie stars. And to me, the star of the movie is the concept, um, and that's what that's what uh, that's what we sell. So you accept the idea of being considered the Roger Corman of the 21st century? I love it. Roger Corman and William Castle. scary to interact with someone who you can't see, whether it's dark or whether they're disguising themselves. Uh, in this movie, James DeMonaco, who wrote and directed the first movie and wrote and directed the second movie, was very focused on what the masks would look like. And uh, I, he's got a sick mind, and, uh, and I thought he did a great job with them. And the, the one God written inside is a sort of reminder of sort of something between Friday 13 and Halloween. Yeah, I, think, I don't know what James would say, but I definitely think it's an homage to those movies for sure. Yeah. Idee per un seguito? Ci sono già idee per un seguito? Yeah, I have two ideas for what the sequel would be. One idea would be to make a movie about the revolutionaries, the people who think the purge is a really bad idea, who are the good guys. The second um, idea would be to make a prequel about the first year the purge took place. So tell it from the point of view of the new founding fathers, who are the bad guys, and, um, and see how they got the law passed, and then see what would happen the first year it took place. I don't. I don't know for sure if, if this movie is successful. I'd like to either do one of those two ideas or another idea, but we don't aren't planning on it yet because this movie hasn't come out. They can be released, yeah? Yeah, well, I think, um, I, I think I, I like, it's called, I like, I like thinking of it as like the adult version of Hunger Games. And, um, and I think, I hope that movies serve that purpose uh, as opposed to actual laws in society. So movies are, to a certain degree, a purge of the, of, man's, you know, our need to be violent. Hopefully, the movies help help reduce that. I don't know if that's true or not, but I like to think, I like to hope that it's true. Eh, prima si è parlato di Roger Palman e William Castle e del fatto che i vostri film sono low budget. A questo punto vorrei sapere se voi avete dei punti di riferimento per quanto riguarda produttori che hanno fatto buoni film spendendo poco. Vedendo questi due film a me vero in mente anche Enemy Territory, che era un film prodotto da Charles Band negli anni Ottanta. Volevo sapere se conosce anche Charles Band, visto che lui è uno degli eredi di Gorman, e, e se lo ritiene anche tra i suoi ispiratori. Which one of Corman's kids? What was his name? Il nome del produttore è Charles Band. Del film... Oh, yeah, Charles Band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Il film è Enemy yeah, Territory. Yeah. Enemy Territory. Um... um Yeah, so uh, those are all of those people I, I have studied and know a lot about. Our approach is slightly different, but I think what is similar, at least I think, I think low-budget movies um, definitely for horror make the movies better. They make the movies feel more real. The lack of special effects and the lack of stunts make the directors focus on character and story and performance. And to me, that's, the, that's what makes a movie good or not, much more than effects in CGI 
and all that other other stuff. And I think there's a place for that in big movies. It's just those those are movies that we don't do. Possono, diciamo, dare una nuova linfa a quel sottogenere di cinema, diciamo, d'azione o comunque thriller che ha una, un radicamento nella società, in tematiche, in tematiche comunque sociali e politiche molto forti. Se, come vede questo particolare sottogenere, insomma, il suo futuro immediato? Um, I, I, I really don't know, but I, nothing would make me happier if they did. And in the movie there are also sometimes some ironical stuff that I think when the girl say I love you, the guy was killed. Instantly, so he's yeah, like right. so what? <laughs> I thought those, I thought the, 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 the couple was kind of an annoying, they were an annoying couple, so. <laughs> I thought he had it coming. Um, the other idea is that the hero, like Frank Grillo, the heroes in our movies, in The Purge, uh, don't kill. Um, and the reason the, the first movie was kind of a more independent feeling movie than the second movie, besides the scope, is that in the first movie there was, there was not a single likable character. In the second movie there's definitely a reluctant hero. So it's a more traditional, uh, there's a more traditional narrative in the second movie. Um, but I think the fact that there's this, this uh, social message stuck in the movie, for me, I think actually the second movie is more effective because those two things work well together. I think it's hard to do a movie where no one's likable and you have a message. I think that's a lot to, a lot to ask. Come si fa a convincere Michael Bay a spendere poco per fare un film? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, uh, the way Michael Bay produced The Purge one, Michael Bay is a very smart businessman. And his company produced a lot of remakes. Amityville, Friday the 13th, uh, two more I can't think of. Um, and those movies kind of went out of fashion about three or four years ago. And a, they, a bit, and now they're coming back actually, but they were out of fashion three or four years ago. And so two people, his two partners came to me and said, uh, how do you do your movies? We want to do one. And I think, I think uh, and, uh, and I gave them a script to make. And Michael Bay, had his lawyer call me, and his lawyer said, look, we'll make this one if, uh, if, uh, if you, I, excuse me, it was the other way around. He gave me a script to make, and then he said, and then he said, we'll let you make this one if you give us one. And so then we gave him the purge, and the purge we made, and the other one we didn't. <laughs> Um, we, so we've, now we've produced three movies with Michael Bay. We've produced The Purge, The Purge Anarchy, and this October we have a movie come out, comes out that based, based on a Ouija board called Ouija. And Ouija was a, uh, was a movie that Michael Bay was developing with, um, Uh, hold on one second. McGee, Michael Bay and McGee were developing an Universal for $110 million. And after the Purge experience, Michael Bay got a little more used to low budget and asked me if we could do that movie together for a five instead of a hundred and five. <laughs> Maybe it's true that uh, big budgets just um, allow less creativity in the movie. 
as a general rule, it's 100% true. But there are five people in the world who actually have total creative control at any budget, and Michael Bay is one of them. <laughs> Michael Bay, Jim Cameron, uh, Spielberg maybe, and that's, that's, that's about it. The, the general uh, of your results looks so much like uh, like maybe you know it's a very standard standard look as a uh, intellectual radical uh, progressive black. So you know, just the, the look of the the, the battles, uh, Yeah, we thought about like Malcolm X, where uh, uh, that was part of the thinking. Um, they were fighting for uh, fighting for the right thing. Ai prossimi progetti della Blue Mouse Horror uh, si può avere qualche anticipazione? Yeah, so we have in October a uh, Ouija, like I talked about. We have in uh, January Amityville, which we're doing a, uh, it's not a remake, it's a, it's, a, it's a reboot, it's a reinvention of the Amityville story with a French director named Frank Calfoon, who made Maniac. Uh, and then at the end of January, we have a film called Boy Next Door, which is an, an erotic thriller uh, that stars Jennifer Lopez. Big low budget, yeah. We're, now we're shooting a Western with John Travolta, which is low budget. Boy Next Door, yeah. With, uh, with John Travolta. So it's running a lot of movie games, uh, not, not only other, we are in our just trying out the uh, big like theater, health theater, faster. Yeah, we're gonna. What, we're, what I'm really strict about is sticking to low budget. But um, if if another movie sneaks in there that I think uh, that I like. Um, that uh, that uh, that might be another genre kind of, and it, it, they're connected to horror, like an erotic thriller. There's scary moments in it. The western is a kind of horror western, but uh, but I'm open to doing other genres as long as they're low budget. Okay, so we'll move on to the gist, in which we have been inspired by the writers John Carpenter, George Romero. In questi ultimi anni il loro cinema fatica un po' a trovare spazio negli ultimi decenni, penni, se si può dire, oppure si tratta di maestri del genere con quanto ha fatto la storia. Now, you mean why? I, 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 I think they're making their movies too expensively. There was one thing that we, uh, movie that we, 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 um, we, uh, we developed with John, with, with John Carpenter. Uh, uh, but they're used to a system where there was more money to make movies. The DVD market was better, there was no piracy, and the movie business in general used to be more lucrative than it is now. And change is hard, and when you're used to getting 10 or 15 million dollars to make a movie and suddenly you have four, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a shock. Tornando al western, al film western, ha parlato di western horror. Any western. Ah, ah ok, ha anticipato la domanda. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what, that's what we're, we're, we're trying to make a spaghetti western in uh, New Mexico. It's Ty West as the director, he's a great, a great director. And Ethan Hawke, it's Ethan Hawke and John Travolta. And uh, Ethan and I have wanted to make a western for 20 years. So we're, uh, we're excited to finally get to do it. Did you so use the the or Western? It's, it's, spaghetti. It, it's a horror. It's a spaghetti Western. It is a spaghetti Western. Did you use Thai? What's that? Thai West. Thai West. 
Ah, Tai West, yes. yes. Uh, the, Roost, uh, uh, the Roost director um, is one of the actors of uh, Your Next. Tai West. Yes, Ty West did Your Next, The Innkeepers. VHS. V uh, VHS, he did a piece in VHS. Yeah, he's done about five movies. They mostly had smaller distribution. He just did a movie about Jim Jones, uh, uh, about the people that Jim Jones killed, you know, the, the people who all took the... Um, Sacramento. The movie. It's called The Sacrament, yeah. Yes, uh, at the last uh, festival of Venice. Oh, did you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did it, we just did a Jim Jones movie too that Phil Juanu directed, totally different, with Lily Rabe and uh, Jessica Alba. But uh, but that'll be out in about a year and a half, but I'm excited about that. So what's your question about it? Do I think what? The Right. What's the scariest thing about the perch? What do you think? Yeah. Is for Emily. The scariest thing about the purge is that uh, it actually that it could happen. <laughs> That's to me the scariest thing about the purge. Because you can, you can't rule away the guns in your country. We somehow every time every time someone gets shot in our country, we put war guns, not less. And I don't know how we're going to fix that. Alright. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.